Welcome to another episode of the True Crime Tales. Today's episode is called, The Whispers in the Shadows. Today, the True Crime Tales delves into the chilling tales of real-life crime that has captivated and horrified us. In today's episode, we unravel the mysterious events surrounding the disappearance of Kathy Allen. Our story begins in the quiet town of Crestwood, where the Allen family lived an ordinary life. Kathy Allen, a bright and ambitious college student, was on the brink of a promising future. She was studying criminology and was one of the tops in her class. She really enjoyed the topic, and the studies really interested her. She really loved to be a criminologist and get into the field to see the characteristics of people who commit crimes. She was excited to collect and analyze qualitative and quantitative data surrounding crimes, ultimately providing insights and solutions to prevent crimes in a community. She wanted to get her master's degree in the field. She is currently finishing up her bachelor's degree after four years of studies. She found she was loving the psychology part of her schooling, where she was learning why a person thinks the way they do, and what could possibly make them snap and commit crimes. At first, she was very uneasy about doing and watching the autopsies, but she learned to put it out of her mind and push through them. She loved gathering data and evidence from the actual crime scene. She saw how the criminals leave behind evidence that incriminates them in a courtroom. She often thought to herself that if she ever did that, she would know how to pull off the perfect crime. Many times, she thought that she wanted to have a second major in forensic science. She loved analyzing the evidence and collecting it. She was off from school for the summer and wanted to forget about school and studies for a while. She was content in her house where she felt comfortable and safe. On one clear warm evening, Kathy wanted to get away from the house for a while. She told her family that she was going out with friends and would return shortly. However, on that seemingly ordinary Saturday evening, Kathy vanished without a trace. It was July 2023, when Kathy told her family she was going out to meet friends. Little did they know that it would be the last time they saw her. The town was abuzz with rumors and speculations, but the police had no leads. Kathy Allen had simply vanished into thin air. The police questioned all the friends that she normally hung out with and got no closer to any closure on the case. In fact, it only got deeper. They tried to locate her cell phone, but that too was a dead end. It seems her phone had been turned off. Kathy did not drive her car, so they had no way to search for her trail in the car. There was no way to track her no one to talk to, and nothing to go on. She did not have a boyfriend or enemies, so the leads were running out. They thought that maybe she had met someone outside and was spending her time with them. They asked around the diners and other places she might hang out, but that also turned up a dead end. As weeks passed, the mystery deepened. The Allen family started receiving cryptic messages, hinting at Kathy's whereabouts. Each message was more perplexing than the last, leading them on a twisted scavenger hunt through abandoned warehouses, forgotten alleyways, and desolate parks. Each letter seemed to lead them to another letter, and then more. The Allens thought that the letters were intended to allow the person who is sending them to see if they are being followed or if someone else is getting the letters. They were growing ever more scared for their daughter and were worried about her health. They followed the letters exactly, 
because they did not know if they were being watched each time they picked up a letter. Crestwood was not a big city, but a smaller town. The Allens knew the town well as they grew up here, as most of the residents of this town did. It was a close-knit town where everyone knew everyone, and they all knew what everyone was doing. At the end of the letters gave them a clue to go to find the next letter. The letters always stated that if the instructions were not followed to the detail, that the next letter would give them the directions to Kathy's body parts. Just as they thought they would finally get the letter telling them what to do or where to find their daughter, they would read, go home now, and wait for another contact. The first letter was left in the mailbox. Since that first letter, the police have been staking out the house for any more signs of someone dropping the letters. They never saw anyone approach the house. In fact, the next letter came by regular mail. This was tearing up the family because they did not know anything about where Kathy was or her health. All they could think of was she had to be scared, and if not tortured by the sinister person who took her. They did not even rule out the possibility that it could have been more than one person in this case. The police were no closer now than they were from day one. The messages were signed by a mysterious figure known only as the Watcher. The Watcher claimed to know the truth behind Kathy's disappearance and revealed in the torment of the Allen family. As the investigation intensified, the Watcher's messages became increasingly sinister, leaving the town gripped in fear. As the town heard more about this case, they all feared for their own families, and since it was the summer, school was out and everyone wanted to be outside to enjoy the summer days and nights. This put all the families on edge, not knowing what could or would be next. The Allen family thought that they knew their daughter good, but as they started to rethink her emotions since being in school, they started to see some sinister patterns evolving that were so subtle, they did not even notice it. They started to find out that it seemed like Kathy was far too confident in her studies, and to them seemed like she knew ways to pull off a crime, murder, or kidnapping, and ways to do it without leaving a forensic trail. Desperate for answers, the Allen family turned to private investigators, uncovering a web of secrets that stretched far beyond Crestwood. Kathy's double life, Hidden relationships, and a dark underbelly of crime all played a role in the tangled mystery. As the investigator questioned the family and revealed to them what the other town members were also saying, it seemed like Kathy was not exactly the daughter they thought she was. She had been on some relationships and dates that the family never knew about. As the pieces of the puzzle fell into place, the Allen family discovered some shocking truths about their daughter. The question remained, was Kathy a victim or a willing participant in the shadows that now consumed their lives? In a dramatic turn of events, the Allen family received a chilling invitation to confront the Watcher at an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town. Armed with newfound knowledge, they ventured into the heart of darkness, desperate for closure. The confrontation that ensued would shatter the Allen family's reality and expose the true mastermind behind Kathy's disappearance. In a shocking twist, the town of Crestwood would never be the same again. Inside the dimly lit warehouse, the Allen family faced the Watcher, a cloaked figure, shrouded in darkness. As the confrontation unfolded, shocking revelations emerged about the Watcher's connection to Kathy and the sinister motives that had set this chilling chain of events in motion. The Watcher, 
armed with letters and a black box, which he said would contain some body parts of Kathy if they did not do as he instructed them to do. The Watcher wanted to really scare the Allens and make them think where they went wrong and why this is being done to them. Kathy's father was pleading that they had done everything they were told of them to do. There should be no reason to fill the box. As they were talking, the Watcher slipped into the light a little more so that the Allens could see him a little better. Kathy's mom and dad caught a glimpse of him little better, and her mom immediately recognized him. The Watcher was none other than Kathy's estranged stepbrother, Sam Hayes, who had orchestrated the entire charade to expose the corrupt underbelly of Crestwood. His motive was fueled by a personal vendetta against those who had wronged him and his sister. Sam was Kathy's older stepbrother. He was from the mother's first marriage and was considered evil and spiteful. He grew up in another town since the divorce and grew to dislike his stepfather. He blamed the stepfather for the separation of the family. He was always trying to find a way to dehumanize and destroy him. The Allen family now faced a devastating truth. Kathy had willingly joined forces with her stepbrother, becoming entangled in a web of crime and corruption. As Sam's vendetta against the town unfolded, the family struggled to reconcile their love for Kathy with the shocking reality of her choices. Sam and Kathy struggled with the idea of not including her in the plot to disappear and leave it all on the stepbrother. Kathy wanted to finish her school and forget this plot ever evolved, but Sam would not let her forget that they did this together. Then she told him to make the letters and to use gloves so as not to leave any traces of his DNA on the letters so that they would trace that back. She was using some of her schooling to keep the path cold and prevent anything from being able to trace it back to them. Crestwood, once a haven of tranquility, was now a battleground where family loyalty clashed with justice. The aftermath of the revelation left scars that would forever alter the lives of those involved. As the truth emerged, the town grappled with the fallout. Sam Hayes was apprehended, and Kathy faced a moral reckoning. The once quiet town of Crestwood was forced to confront its own demons and the shadowy secrets that lurked beneath its picturesque facade. The courtroom became the stage for a gripping trial, as Kathy Allen faced charges for her involvement in her stepbrother's elaborate scheme. The jury's verdict would determine whether justice would prevail or if the thirst for revenge would overshadow the truth. The tension in the courtroom was palpable as the jury deliberated Kathy's fate. Would she be held accountable for her actions, or would her defense successfully convince the court that she was a victim manipulated by her stepbrother's vendetta? The lawyers for Kathy tried to let the jury see the good side of Kathy. Her good grades, her dedication to wanting to help others through her wanting to help the community. They told the jury that it was orchestrated by Sam Hayes. The prosecution tried to make the jury see that it could not have been done alone, as for she was an active partner in the crime of kidnapping, deceit, slander, and an accessory to the letters. They pointed out that she was studying to be a criminologist. The verdict was delivered, guilty. Kathy Allen was sentenced to a lengthy prison term for her involvement in the crimes orchestrated by her stepbrother. Crestwood, already scarred by the revelation, now grappled with the aftermath of the trial. Kathy ended up getting five years in jail and five years probation.
Sam ended up getting 10 years in prison with the chance to get parole after eight years of good behavior. He got a stiffer sentence because the jury found that he was the one who constructed the plot and forced Kathy to go along to get even with the stepfather. The small town of Crestwood was left divided, with some sympathizing with Kathy's plight and others condemning her for the role she played in the elaborate scheme. The Allen family, shattered by the events, struggled to find a sense of normalcy in the wake of the trial. The town faced a reckoning as it confronted the corruption and darkness that had festered beneath the surface. Kathy's imprisonment served as a stark reminder that the consequences of the past cannot be escaped, even in the idyllic facade of a small community. As Crestwood tried to move forward, the shadows of the Allen saga lingered. The Watcher's revelation had exposed the town's underbelly, prompting authorities to investigate and clean up the corruption that had allowed such sinister plots to unfold. Thanks for listening to another podcast of the True Crime Tales. Please come again and remember. Please subscribe.